Shalom. First and foremost, as always, before I get started, I want to give all praise, our honor, and our glory unto Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. Next double honors to the head apostles slash elder bishops of the great millstone, who teach and who rule well. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere. I keep, keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless of whether people hear, whether they forbear. Right, and this, uh, this is going to be uh, a, a somewhat of a uh, history lesson, but also, um, of course, you know, edifying scriptures are going to come out. All right, and today is September second, first Monday of September. All right, also known of in here in America as Labor Day. All right, so I'm going to uh, be doing a, a quick history lesson on the origins of Labor Day. All right, as I have pulled up here on the screen, and then also the the uh, pagan origins of the original holiday that Labor Day stems from. Okay, and Lord's will is edifying to the elect. All right, this is um here I here I got pulled up. Okay, it says May first is International Workers Day, also known of in some countries as Labor Day or May Day. It's a day to celebrate the working the working class and laborers, and to recognize the struggles and achievements of the labor movement. All right, what you must understand is that pretty much all of the holidays that uh, people celebrate in America and around the world go back to to pagan practices. Okay, May Day is I believe it is a um, let's go ahead and look it up. Matter of fact. Okay, so Labor Day, the original uh, Labor Day goes back to May Day. All right, let's just look at this right quick. Let's see. All right. So it says May Day has multiple meanings, including a day to celebrate workers and a European festival that marks the beginning of summer. That's not exactly what I was looking for. Let's, let's get this right quick. I know for a fact that May Day has pagan origins. I remember exactly what it what is in veneration of though. Okay, it says May Day, also known of as Beltane, is a pagan holiday that celebrates the beginning of summer and the height of spring. It is a cross quarter day, falling about halfway between the spring equinox and the summer solstice. All right. Now, that being said, okay, it is a pagan holiday, and if you know the history of the Roman Catholic Church, all right. Uh, first being set up by uh, Emperor Constantine of, of um, in, in the year 325 AD at the Council of Nicaea, which there was five ecclesiastical councils. All right, then you understand that these are the, this is where um, the what's known of as modern day Christianity and Catholicism uh, got its its roots from. This is where it started. Okay, with with Emperor Constantine. Now he himself was a pagan. All right, and he believed in pagan gods okay he was a sun worshiper uh, and he believed in the uh, greek and roman gods as well okay it was known of as the pantheon now with that being said he was the one that pretty much started up uh, what we have today known of as the roman catholic church and then from that all the different branches of christianity sprung from that tree all right so i got a quick article right here okay and this is actually from a catholic church are called uh, Verso Ministries, and it's going to go into um, it's going to go into their how they celebrate uh, May Day. All right, which once again remember that Labor Day stems from this holiday, this uh, this fake holiday called May Day. All right, so you can see first thing you notice here is the um, is the woman with the crown of roses upon her head. All right, that's the first thing that you notice here. So, we're going to read on down and see what it's all about, okay? It says, May crowning, what, what it is and why we do it. It's our hope and prayer that this May, you'll celebrate May crowning in your own parish or home and have a special encounter with Christ through the Virgin Mary. At its simplest, May crowning is a ritual celebrated in the month of May where an image or statue of Mary is crowned with a wreath of flowers and honored as the Queen of Heaven and the Mother of God. But this simple ceremony carries deep meaning for the Catholic faith. Okay, And uh, so what they do, they get a statue or image of Mary and they crown it with roses. 
Now, I did research and I figured out that May Day is in veneration of the goddess Maya. Okay, it's a Greek, an ancient, uh, you know, a Greek uh, idol. Okay, and what do you see here? When she's depicted, she is depicted with a crown of roses. Okay, she's depicted with a crown of roses. So you see that the origins, all right, what it what it really goes back to because what what uh, Emperor Constantine did in 325 A.D. All right, with the with the Council of Nicaea and all the other ecclesiastical councils, all, right, all of the people that that were part of those councils were all uh, uh, pagan pagan worshippers. All right, so what they did is they merged their pagan ideologies with the Israelite culture, Israelite religion, uh, and created what is known up today as the Roman Catholic Church. And then from there, the the branches that spread forth of that tree are what we know of today as modern Christianity in all of its forms. All right. They all go back to the false prophet, which is the Roman Catholic Church. All right. But as you can see, okay, so they talk about, let's read it again. At its simplest, May crowning is a ritual celebrated in the month of May, where an image or a statue of Mary is crowned with a wreath of flowers and honored as the Queen of Heaven and the Mother of God. But this simple ceremony carries deep meaning for the Catholic faith. All right, and once again, you go to the goddess Maya. This is where uh, May Day comes from. Okay, and what do you see? She's crowned, and I didn't. I didn't put it like I just put goddess Maya. You see, she's crowned with flowers and roses on her head. Okay, and surrounded with flowers and roses. All right, so you see that you see the correlation. Now, Queen of Heaven worship is nothing new. The Israelites been on that. Let's go ahead and get some some scriptures on that. Okay, the Book of Jeremiah, chapter forty four. And I'm going to start at verse 1. Alright. As a matter of fact, I'll start at verse 2. Okay. There. Uh, Thus saith Yahweh, power of host, the God of Israel, ye have seen all the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem and upon all the cities of Judah. And behold, this day they are a desolation, and no man dwelleth therein. Because of their wickedness they have commit, which they have committed to provoke me to anger, and that they went to burn incense and to serve other gods, whom they knew not, neither they, ye, nor your fathers. Howbeit I sent unto you all my servants the prophets, rising early and sending them, saying, Oh, do not this abominable thing that I hate. Okay, so that's, that's exactly what we do. All right, that's the reason why we don't celebrate the holidays, okay, the customs of the heathens, All right, Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, okay, and you can add Labor Day, or any of, any of these holidays that the people here in America, Babylon, the great celebrate, you can add that to the list. All right. He says, how be it? I'm going to read that again. Jeremiah 44 and 4. How be it? I sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them, saying, Do not this abominable thing that I hate. But they hearken not, nor incline their ear to turn from their wickedness to burn incense unto other gods. Wherefore, for this meaning, for this reason, my fury and mine anger was poured forth and was kindled in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, and they are wasted and desolate as at this day. Okay, therefore now this, the, not, therefore now thus saith Yahweh, the power of hosts, the, the God of Israel, wherefore commit ye this great evil against your souls to cut off from you man and woman, child and suckling out of Judah to leave you none to remain. He said, what? He said, if, if I sent the prophets to give you warning, why do you continue to do these abominations? All right. It says in that ye provoked me unto wrath with the works of your hands, burning incense unto other gods in the land of Egypt, whither ye be gone to dwell, that ye might cut yourselves off and that ye might be a curse and a reproach among all the nations of the earth. Okay. Which we're, you know, Jeremiah told this them back then, told this to the Israelites back then, but it applies today as well. We're here in, in, in spiritual Egypt, the land of our captivity. Doing the same thing. Our right, people are uh, worshiping, you know, worshiping uh, different different gods, man. All right, starting off with with Serapis Christus, okay, uh, J C, also known as Zeus, Jupiter, all right, Isus Christos, and then the modern day prototype, Jesus Christ. All right, that is not that is another god, okay. That is um, uh, uh, Isus Christos or Sera uh, Jesus Christ, as, as they know of today. All right, was an invention of Ptolemy Soter, 
All right, going back to the Ptolemaic dynasty of, of the ancient uh, Greeks, okay? Then the, around the time of Alexander the Great, he was uh, Ptolemy was one of the four generals that, that, that was split all right, from Alexander the Great when, when he perished, okay? But continuing on, it says, verse uh, 9, Have you not... Forgotten the, have you forgotten the wickedness of your fathers and the wickedness of the kings of Judah and the wickedness of their wives and your own wickedness and the wickedness of your wives, which they have committed in the land of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? They are not humbled even unto this day. People are not humbled at all. Neither have they feared nor walked in my law nor in my statutes that I set before you and before your fathers. And I'm going to skip down to the point. All right. I'm going to skip down to the point. Um, this whole chapter is fire, but. It specifically mentions the Queen of Heaven worship. Okay, not to do it. All right. This is uh, Jeremiah 44 and, and 16. As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of Yahweh, we will not hearken unto thee. This is what people say. Say, no, we're going to continue to celebrate our heathen customs. All right, but we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done. We and our fathers, our kings, and our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then had we plenty of victuals and were well and saw no evil. But since we left off to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. And when we burned incense to the queen of heaven and poured out drink offerings unto her, did we make her cakes to worship her and to pour out drink offerings unto her without our men? All right, so not so... He's, he's speaking to the women, and they're saying, did we do this on our, on our own accord? Did not our men also all right, uh, offer offer up uh, sacrifices to the queen of heaven? Right? So you see the whole house okay, of Judah and Jerusalem was given to this, this wickedness, man. Okay? And it's still continuing on today through the false prophet all right, of this beast system, all right, which is the Roman Catholic Church. Okay? The crowning of, of the Mother Mary, as they call it, all right, which they say is the mother of the Most High, which is... Which is completely false. Okay, and that also goes back to uh, uh, more Greek and Roman uh, pagan mythology. All right, let's get let's get a few more scriptures, and then we'll go back. Okay, it says uh, verse uh, twenty. Let's get twenty-one. A uh, twenty. Then Jeremiah said unto all the people, to the men and to the women, and to all the people which had given him that answer, saying. The incense that ye burned in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, ye and your fathers, your kings and your princes and the people of the land, did not the Most High remember them and came it not into his mind? So that the Most High, Yahweh, could no longer bear because of the evil of your doings and because of the abominations which ye have committed. Therefore is your land a desolation and an astonishment and a curse and without an inhabitant as at this day. Okay. Because you have burned incense, and because you have sinned against the Most High, and have not obeyed the voice of Yahweh, nor walked in his law, nor in his statutes, nor in his testimonies, therefore this evil is happening to you as at this day. Okay, so we got enough of that right there. Okay, beautiful scripts. This is Queen of Heaven worship, man. All right. Um, let's go back. Let's read a little bit more. Okay, so they queen, uh, they, 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 uh, they crown, excuse me, the, the uh, statues and, and pictures of images of the Virgin Mary, which they call the Queen of Heaven, the Mother of God. Because why? All they did is take these pagan practices and repackage them all right, in a way that would be pleasing and, and would hide the true origins all right, of these different ceremonies and rituals. Okay, So let's read about it. The ceremony, unlike most holidays, May crowning doesn't have a set date and can be celebrated at any time during the month of May. Some churches opt for Mother's Day, all right, which is another Mother's Day goes back to that that false um, Greek goddess of Rhea, I R H E A. Okay, you can look that up. All right, that's what Mother's Day goes back to, and uh, also you know you could get um, uh, Semiramis and Tammuz. Okay, all these all these different uh, pagan deities. That's all they did. They just repackaged, uh, they they repackaged the different false mytholo mythological idols. Right, which they call gods, and they put them all into, you know, into uh, the Catholic Church worship, which is why they worship, uh, they pray to angels, right? these different angels, or what they call saints, are idols, right, they pray to different angels, they pray to Mary as the Queen of Heaven, 
all right, which the queen of heaven worship is forbid in the prophecies. All right, we just read it in John, the four, uh, excuse me, we read it in Jeremiah, the 44th chapter. All right, okay, so it says, unlike most days, May crowning doesn't have a set date and can be celebrated at any time during the month of May. Some churches opt for Mother's Day while others do it as soon as May arrives. Recently, however, Pope Francis chose to add the day to the liturg liturgical calendar, placing it placing it in the day after Pentecost for 2021. That means it falls on May 24th. There's also no set ritual, but traditionally, May crownings are celebrated during the Mass on that day after procession. A crown of flowers and herbs is placed on the head of the statue of Mary. It's usually followed by prayers and our hymns centered around Mary. The flowers and herbs are usually replaced throughout the rest of the month to keep them fresh. Flowers and herbs. Okay. Let's see. Let's read about the goddess Maya. And it'll make sense. Let's see. Bear with me, let me, uh, okay, so it says, Maya is the goddess of the fields in Greek mythology, okay, let's see, the concept embodied, the concept of growth, let's see, bear with me. I'm just curious. As I'm making this video, I'm also being edified myself as well. <clears throat> Images don't want to see that. Okay, how to represent fertility. Goddess of the fields. So it doesn't really give much information on it. Okay, well, here's here's a good example. And this is what I was looking for, actually. All right, so, and it even tells you the origin of the month of May. All right, it says Maya was considered the goddess of spring and growth. That's that's why um, they they put flowers and herbs on the head of of Mary because this is their this is the equivalent. Which these different idols that they worship in these in these uh, churches, all right, a lot of times they encompass or embody uh, multiple different idols. <clears throat> Excuse me is dry they encompass multiple different idols from different uh different mythological cultures all right and religions all right excuse me so it says maya was considered the goddess of spring and growth she was considered a nurturer of earth and growing plants her roman equivalent equivalent bonadia was known as the goddess of fertility and named for the latin word mayas meaning large she is also associated with growth in the springtime, all right, which that's what May Day is all about. Okay, and the May crowning hints the putting of flowers and herbs on the top of the head. All right. The meaning of May crowning. While Mary, the mother of God, is revered and celebrated all year long, May is a special month to celebrate the Queen of Heaven. May has been Mary's month since the medieval period when May was considered the end of winter and the start of a new season of growth. It's a time for new beginnings and the chance to begin with great added, with great gratitude and devotion. So it represents what? The crowning represents the start of a new season of growth. Did we not just read? All right. Did we not just read that, that Maya is the goddess of spring and growth? It's right here. See that? Oh, it's lucky. Come on, Bubba. See? Maya was considered the goddess of spring and growth. All right. May was considered the end of winter and the start. And remember, this is from a Catholic website. Excuse me. Goodness. And the start of a new season or growth. We really, literally almost word for word. That's not a coincidence. Yahweh Yal Shai gave us these. He gave us his clues. All right. It's a time for new beginnings and a chance to begin with gratitude and devotion. There are many reasons she is considered the perfect, the considered the queen of heaven. She was a perfect follower of J.C. and so is considered the crown of creation. She is also the mother of the son of the Most High. Okay, 
Jesus, who is the King of Israel and the universe. And of course, she is the most important woman of our faith and our spiritual mother. All right. It's our hope and prayer that this May you'll celebrate May crowning in your own parish or home and have a special encounter with Christ, they say, through the Virgin Mary. Okay, so that's this is from a Catholic website. All right. Um, so you see the correlation there. And, you know, uh, Mary, all right, while she was the vessel that was used, you know, to bring forth all right, Yahweh Shai, all right, she is not to be venerated. Okay, she is, uh, she is not a de she's not to be deified or venerated. Is what I'm trying to say. Okay, there's only one way to get to the heavenly Father, and it's not by praying to, it's not by excuse me, it's not by praying to uh to angels, or to to Mary. All right, it's through Yahweh Shai. Okay, this is uh Saint John chapter ten. And verse 1, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is a, sh is a shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And the st a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers this parable spake Yahweh shine unto them but but they understood not what things they were which, which which things they were which he spake unto them and then said Yahweh shine unto them again verily verily i say unto you i am the door of the sheep all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers but the sheep did not hear them i am the door by me if any man enter in he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture okay the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. All right. <clears throat> so, all right, as, as we see here, okay, Yahweh Shai is that door. All right. I am the door. Let's, see, let's read again Gen, uh, John 10 and 9. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. All right. So not not praying to angels, okay, not praying to Mother Mary, to who they call Mother Mary, all right. Even in Revelation 19 and 10, all right, and, and other scriptures as well, okay, the, when, they, when, when John the Revelator bowed to the angel, okay, and I fell at his feet to worship, and he said unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. I worship Yahweh for the testimony of Yahweh Shai as the spirit of prophecy. But the main part, all right, he said, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren. Don't worship angels. They're not to be worshipped. All right. Don't don't worship uh any any people that are people that are dead. All right, that's ancestral worship, which is wicked. Okay, and that's a Hamite practice. All right, and the Lord, okay, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, all right, he warned against practicing or worshiping in the way that the heathens worship okay this is um <clears throat> this is deuteronomy 12th chapter and let's see verse uh, 29 when yahweh thy power shall cut off the nations from before thee whether thou goest to possess them and thou succeedest and dwellest in their land take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them after that they be destroyed from before thee and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. So don't don't see don't look and see how the heathen nations worship their idols. Alright, and say, I'm gonna do the same thing. It says, Thou shalt not do so unto Yahweh thy power, for every abomination for every abomination to Yahweh which he hateth, have they done unto their gods, for even their sons and their daughters they have burnt in the fire to other to their gods. What thing soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. Okay, so he never said anywhere in the Bible to pray to angels. It's not anywhere in the Bible. Actually, it's, it's, it's spoken of not to do that. Never said to venerate uh, Mary. All right. He said, whatsoever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. Simple as that. All right. Let's get a few more scripts. Let's get uh, Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, and 
I'll start at verse 6, and this is, uh, it says, freedom from rules and new life in the Hamashiach, our freedom from the rules of, of humans. Okay, it says, and now, just as you accepted Yahweh Shai Mashiach as your Lord, you must continue to follow him and let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. Okay, I forgot to mention this is an NLT. It says, don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Yahweh Shai. See that? For in Yahweh Shai lives all the fullness of the Most High in a human body. So you also, who are complete through your union with Yahweh Shai, who is the head over every ruler and every authority. When you came to Yahweh Shai, you were circumcised, but not by a physical procedure. Yahweh Shai performed a spiritual circumcision, the cutting away of your sinful nature. All right, that's the true. That's the true uh, communion. That's the true being joined unto the Most High. All right, through Yahweh Shai is through spiritual circumcision. Okay, so I don't need to read more on that. Um, actually, let's just get this right quick. Isaiah twenty nine and thirteen. We get a few more scriptures and wrap it up. All right, Isaiah twenty nine and thirteen, and it says in the NLT. And so, the, so the Lord says, these people say they are mine, they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And their worship of me is nothing but man-made rules learned by rote. I don't like that translation as much. Let me <clears throat> let me get that in the Good News translation. All right, let's go ahead and get it. Okay, it says, "The Lord said these people claim to worship me, but their words are meaningless, and their hearts are somewhere else. Their religion is nothing but human rules and traditions." Which they have simply memorized. I like that one better. All right, so that's what we see here, man. Okay, that's what we see here. Right, let's get a little bit more. Go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, NLT on this one as well. Amos chapter five. <clears throat> Amos chapter five, and let's see. Okay, Amos five and verse twenty-one. It says, I hate all your show and pretense, the hypocrisy of your religious festivals and solemn assemblies. I will not accept your burnt offerings and grain offerings. I won't even notice all your choice peace offerings. Away with your noisy hymns of praise. I will not listen to the music of your harps. Instead, I want to see a mighty flood of justice and an endless river of righteous living. All right, I like the way that reads. Okay, that's that's the true sacrifice. To you, Howard Basham, y'all. Shite. That's if you want to, you want to, you want to celebrate. You got, you got uh, a multitude of biblical holidays to celebrate found in Leviticus, the 16th chapter. Okay, if I'm not mistaken. All right, you don't, don't celebrate the customs of the heathens, man, including Labor Day. All right, including Labor Day. And we'll close out with this the book of Jeremiah, chapter 10, and verse 1. Hear ye the word which Yahweh has spoken unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith Yahweh, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. Alright, and I don't have to I don't have to read any more from that. It's, it goes into what's known of as, as Christmas. Okay. Now you know it goes into the how people lay the tree in their house, they deck it with silver with gold, said don't do these things. And that goes for all the customs of the heathens. Alright? Every single last one of them. So, anyways, you know, Yahweh Rachazah, this video was edifying. All right, you learned a little bit of history on on May Day. All right, and where, and as I mentioned this earlier, uh, I mentioned this yesterday at camp, that all these different, uh, the, the, the week, days of the weeks, the names of the, uh, the names of the months, the weeks, the days are all named after pretty much uh, uh, idol worship, you know, pagan, pagan deities, okay? So May, we just discovered, is named after Maya, all right, the goddess of, of growth, fertility, all right, and a new season. Okay, and we see how the Catholic Church had has merged, uh, has tried to merge that into, the you know into the scriptures, and it's it's just not there. All right, it's it, it's the Queen of Heaven worship, all right, which is an abomination before the Most High, 
And you need to separate yourself from that. Okay, as a matter of fact, we'll, we'll close out with this. Isaiah 52 and 11. Okay, it says, Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence. Touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her. All right, Babylon the Great, this, this B system as well. Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Most High Yahweh. All right, so depart and be ye clean. Okay, so I'm going to close out with that. All right, Yahweh watches I was edifying. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rekakwadash. Until next time.